This podcast is for entertainment purposes only and does not substitute for professional medical advice. Please seek a medical professional or healthcare provider if you're seeking any medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Thanks, everyone. I don't know what we're doing. (laughs) I don't know what we're doing. I don't know. Um, But welcome back. I just played it at every the beginning of every episode. (laughs) Yeah. If you had caught us in the previous Patreon episode, then you would know where that came from. But anyways, welcome back. Welcome. So we're here and we're going to talk about cervical cancer for this episode because it is cervical cancer awareness month so we figure we had done it for breast cancer awareness yeah. mm-hmm. i think it deserves a little bit of a preview not preview but like an overview we're not gonna drown, drown you in information on cancer it could be a lot yeah but we're gonna give you the basics and what to look out for yeah. uh, you know and and all those things and even if it's not even for yourself then for a loved one we're trying to increase awareness absolutely because okay. prevention is key yes Especially and, for these types of cancers and whatnot. Yeah. And we're trying to make our podcast very, very, very relatable. Very yes. easy to talk about. Yes. So it's kind of like we say, just having a conversation. Yep. And yeah. in this conversation, like I said, we're going to talk about cervical cancer. So what is it, Doc? Okay. So cervical cancer is a common form of cancer. It affects women all over the world. And it's strongly associated with HPV infections. Okay. All right. Do you know Amy Wong? Yeah. Yes. The yes. other comedian? Yes. I love Did her. you see her whole entire skit on HPV? No. Oh, man. For those of you that are Wong fans, you know what I'm talking about. It's like she just t- starts going She's off on a rant. She's amazing. Yeah. She won a, a... I know. A Golden a Globe. A Golden Globe. Yeah. Yeah. Good for her. I, I love know. her. I know. And um, she I've won- seen some of her stand-ups, time. but I haven't seen oh that one. Oh, my God. That stand-up is so good. She has like a whole entire rant on HPV. It's really, really funny. Okay. But anyways, okay. So the customary treatments for cervical cancer consist of surgery, chemotherapy, radiation therapy. However, these treatments can be invasive and result in numerous side effects, just like any other kind of cancer treatment. Mm -hmm. So innovations in treatments such as virus-based immunotherapy offer hope in eliminating complications and enhancing outcomes. So Newcastle disease virus has been suggested as a viral oncolytic with great potential for inducing immunity while having minimal side effects. So immunotherapies, including monoclonal antibodies and genetically modified immune cells have also displayed promising and improving rates for survival for patients with cervical cancer. Also, medical therapies like anti-VEGF antibodies and immunotherapeutic agents have been demonstrated to be effective and have obtained approval from medical agencies. The treatment options for cervical cancer encompasses a range of possibilities from surgery alone uh, to combination of surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, and palliative care. I'm really happy that we're discussing palliative care as well. Mm -hmm. Palliative care is so um, under-recognized because everyone associates it with something negative like hospice and all of that. But if, if we are talking palliative, we have not mentioned anything about hospice so it can be very (laughs) delicate like a very delicate situation but i always say if you are diagnosed with something like cancer something where you're going to have treatments side effects it is something it is a long journey Mm -hmm. the palliative care team Mm. can do so much for you you're already dealing with so much pain and discomfort and even mentally so it just so much yeah just know? they give you all the resources that you need all your options and it's really truly how can we make this journey for you the most comfortable exactly which is so important at that yeah. point you you need yeah. all the support you possibly can when you're dealing with that yeah unfortunately. so anytime that someone mentions palliative care team and stuff like that don't take it Mm-mm. as a negative thing don't take it as in hey we need to talk about like end of life we're not right. we're not talking about that right palliative care is so much more than just that okay absolutely so prevalence 
Okay, so the prevalence of cervical cancer varies in different regions and countries, such as in Jigawa, northern Nigeria. It was found that the prevalence of cervical cancer was 13.6%. Among women aged 30 to 49 years in low and middle income countries, the median prevalence of cervical cancer screening was 43.6%, with Latin America and Caribbean and the Caribbean, having the highest prevalence, which was about 84.6%, and Sub-Saharan Africa having the lowest prevalence, with a median of 16.9%. So the worldwide median age standard incidence of cervical cancer was 13.1 per 100,000 women, with the rates varying significantly across countries. Mm -hmm. And globally, cervical cancer is the fourth most common cancer among women, with an estimated 604,000 new cases in 2020 alone. In 1975, the occurrence of cervical cancer has declined sign significantly in all populations in the United States. Around 13,800 women were diagnosed in cerv with cervical cancer in the United States in 2020. Hispanic women have a higher prevalence of cervical cancer compared to non-Hispanic, white, and black women. Additionally, a higher risk of cervical cancer is associated with menstrual irregularities, increasing age, and lower household income. To decrease the incidence of cervical cancer, it is crucial to improve screening coverage as currently only 32% of cervical cancers are detected through screening. By achieving vaccination and screening goals, the U.S. can eliminate cervical cancer by 2030, which is huge. Yeah. It's for a the big love of thing God, to get your HPV vaccine. Please, guys, don't be those people that are like, oh, no, because why get another vaccine? Or I don't have HPV, so why am I going to get it? Guys, HPV is so silent. Yeah. It's so silent. And men are carriers for it. So come on. Like, just men should get um, vaccinated for Absolutely. HPV, both men and women, just because HPV really, really affects women in, in in a way that it could turn into cervical cancer thanks to HPV, doesn't mean that we're the only ones that should get vaccinated. Yeah. Men should kind of help us out here yeah. <laughs> and get well, vaccinated. Yeah, yeah. And, and anyways, like HPV, it just doesn't only cause cervical cancers. It's, it can cause throat right, cancers things. and stuff like that. So um, yeah. men and women, like we're trying we're to in... protect okay one another and truly I, I do a lot of HPV uh, well, yeah, as a pediatrician. Mm -hmm. So usually I start giving the HPV vaccine at the age of nine. And then you're you're boosted later on. Do you have it? I do. Yeah, me too. Yeah. The, uh, the Gardasil. Me. The same yeah. Thing. But the yeah. only thing is that I only got the quadrivalent. So only like only the four. Now it's non-avalent. So it's nine different strains. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. I probably got the same one as you because this was yeah. when I was like 16 or yeah, something. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. So, yeah, and now they've increased the age as well. So before it was like in your mid-20s. Right. You can get it up into your like mid-40s. Yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah. So get your HPV shot. Please. Okay. And mm -hmm. yes, there's a lot of fear in vaccinations. But you know what's another fear that I'm All this... so surprised? Parents mm -hmm. do not want to vaccinate against HPV because they think that it will promote sexual behavior. That is so oxymoronic. It no, but it's it's true. Wow. Yep. That's like hiding condoms from your kid because then like that the mm -hmm. kid won't have sex. They're gonna have sex, yep. just unprotected, because you decided to not give them a condom. Yeah. And I try to tell them it's mm -hmm. not just about like protecting yourself from HPV, which it can be like sexually like transmitted, mm -hmm. but it's just at the end of the day, like it's so much more than just a, a sexually transmitted disease. One hundred percent. You know, like we're talking about cancer, like decreased incidence of cancer, throat cancers, so many really, complications from HPV. Really it's serious stuff, yeah. Just by a simple vaccine and we have so much new data you know coming out on how effective and safe the vaccine is yeah so there really is an... shot exactly but okay so now that you yeah. were talking about it go ahead <laughs> <laughs> yes so speaking of hpv so cervical cancer is closely linked to the acquisition of oncogenic human papillomaviruses so hpv okay hpv is a common skin infection that you can get from skin contact okay so it doesn't have to be just, you know, sexual, but skin contact. Mm -hmm. So HPV can give all sorts of problems in the genital area, like warts and sores, and sometimes it can even turn into cancer. Mm -hmm. It can also cause cancer in your mouth and your neck as well. 
Although most HPV infections resolve on their own, so your immune system kind of like kicks it out, certain individuals may develop cancer because it, we weren't able to kick out the virus. So mm -hmm. it ended up having complications, okay? So presently, there's no universal cure for all forms of HPV-related cancers. However, vaccines are accessible for preventing infections by the most commonly occurring HPV viruses and strains that can lead to these cervical cancers. So right. the ones that are a little bit more virulent, okay? But the rates of occurrence and death from cervical cancers vary significantly based on the coverage of HPV vaccinations and the capacity of screening and treatment in different countries. So HPV strains are connected to the cervical cancer, are connected to cervical cancer, and it is recommended that adolescent females and males receive vaccination against these strains. Symptoms of HPV infection may depend on the type and location. <clears throat> Commonly, symptoms include genital warts, abnormal pap smear results, or no symptoms at all. Yeah. Okay. So managing symptoms and preventing complications is the focus of HPV treatment. Genital warts can be treated typically with cryotherapy or surgical removal. So vaccination is an effective uh, preventative measure against HPV infections in both males and females. Both males and females are recommended to receive the HPV vaccine to protect against genital warts and various cancers, like we've already said, okay? okay. So the HPV vaccines are most effective when given before sexual activity. Routine vaccination during adolescence is recommended. So before we used to give it around like age 11, but truly like now all insurances are pretty much accepting it for age nine. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, back then when I had it, it was 15. I think so, because yeah. I got it at 16 and it was like a new thing. I think Gardasil had just come out back yeah, then. Yeah. God, I, I still remember being super sore from the shot. Me too. And I got three shots. Me too. I yeah. was three or four, but I, yeah, it's probably three. Yeah. So additional factors that increase the risk of cervical cancer include smoking, long-term use of oral contraceptives, engaging in sexual activity, and multiple partners. So starting uh, sexual activity at an early age is also a risk factor and having a weakened immune system. Okay. Right. So symptoms. Cervical cancer may not cause any symptoms in early stages, which is why regular screening is so important. Mm -hmm. As the cancer progresses, common symptoms may include abnormal a vaginal. <laughs> Before I even said vaginal. it. And that's why I it was going to come out of my mouth like that. And I'm like, wait. Vaginal. There we go. <laughs> bleeding. Such as bleeding between periods, after sexual intercourse, or after menopause. Other possible symptoms include pelvic pain during sexual intercourse and unusual vaginal. Mm. <laughs> vaginal discharge. <laughs> Advanced stages of cervical cancer may cause symptoms such as weight loss, fatigue, and loss of appetite. So pretty vague symptoms so that's why screening is so important yeah it's the sure way of finding out if there's something to look for really yeah. really look for or not yeah and then treatment for cervical cancers often include surgical procedures which can range from a simple local excision maybe some cryotherapy if they detect it a combination of surgery radiotherapy chemotherapy and like i said before some palliative care Additional treatment alternatives may include radiation therapy. It can, which basically employs a high energy of x-rays in other forms of radiation to eliminate the cancer cells, as well as the chemotherapy, which employs medications to destroy cancer cells. The provision of multidisciplinary care by centers of excellence is vital to ensure high quality treatment and care for patients with cervical cancer. So that is to say like your team might include your primary care doctor, your specialist, like your gyne onc, your rad onc, probably your surgeon as well. Who else? Pharmacy team can be a big help. Palliative care, like we said yeah. before. Yeah. So what it's trying to say is that it's not just so simple that only one person can kind of yeah. like tell you what to do it's a whole team it's a whole team of people and it's really important that we have these multidisciplinary care systems in place so that we can give our patients the best care possible 100 percent. okay it's also crucial to incorporate cervical cancer treatment into universal health care packages either at no cost or a minimal cost to patients that's just for they should do that for every cancer they really should 
How can you prevent it? Well, primary prevention um, of cervical cancer is greatly aided by the implementing, implementation of the HPV vaccination. The WHO strongly advises that 90% of girls receive the vaccine by age 15. In the U.S., HPV vaccination has been routinely recommended since 2006, and it resulted in a 76.9% coverage rate for one or more doses of the vaccine by 2021. Secondary prevention, another crucial aspect of preventing this cancer, is screening and treatment of precancerous lesions. The PAP test has played a pivotal role in reducing the occurrence and mortality of cervical cancer. Screening guidelines have also incorporated HPV testing, with primary HPV screening being endorsed as the preferred option by the American Cancer Society. PAP smears are... they suck. But they're so important. But it's so important that you just have to fucking deal with it and just do it. That's how I see it. The recommendations have changed so much. So, so much. I remember, I think I got my first pap smear when I was like 18. I got it back when I was like 15 or 16 because I had the assist. Okay. Yeah. Diana, that's different. Yeah. And oh I was like, God. what the hell is going, going on? on? <laughs> and like the pain, I thought it was, oh, I don't know. I thought something like exploded in me or something. Like, And it oh. did. It was a cyst that popped on its own it was i guys it, it was i've given birth and that was worse than worse than birth 100 percent. and i gave natural delivery of birth worse for sure anyway so i went i was i was 15 or 16 mm -hmm. and then i i got a pat because she's like what the hell's going on yeah and then we finally figured it out and but pops suck yeah. back then it was recommended every year and i did it every year but they suck yeah uh, it's Pops a, are just it, they're uncomfortable you're vulnerable yeah, it's, it's very just, personal it's very invasive scraping the inside yeah it scrape with no an anesthetics no nothing okay well, it, okay wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute hold on so the pap you put in the speculum mm -hmm. you open up mm -hmm. right so and then that's you see already everything. that's yeah. already uncomfortable well, yeah, yeah yeah that's already okay. uncomfortable but wait like the scraping i've never had any scraping then like they like swab and they like take little things and stuff like that but yeah, i've never but it's... felt like scraping oh i have what are they scraping so much well for? it's it's the pap it's just like i at least i feel it oh. i'm more sensitive like yeah, that, I, that i feel it everybody's different clearly yeah. but i feel it when they go i see i'm like squeezing my... i see her grab the pap like the the white little pap thing yeah and i'm like oh. here it goes and i i i feel everything dude I f yeah, I, like the scrape. Oh no! And you see the swab, right? I like guess my how, doctor has like hands of an angel. How? No, but I've had different guides do oh, it on yeah. me. So maybe you're just sensitive. I have I've had different guides. Like the first time that one guide, I had to switch from her because she doesn't she wouldn't deliver. Mm -hmm. So then I switched to another one, and then now I've been with the same one since I gave birth. But they've all felt the same regardless. Mm -hmm. And like how you said that it's like the swab. Yeah, that feels like straight up scraping for me interesting yeah like straight up i just feel like and i'm and i bleed after every time yeah every time i bleed yeah. yeah like not a lot yeah. but it's like the spotting a that little spotting clearly the what whatever wherever the scraping mm -hmm, happened mm -hmm. clearly that's what it mm -hmm, is but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's not fun yeah perks of being a woman i guess you could say but Seriously. it's very very important and i and i do it regardless of how much it sucks for me, especially yeah. that I feel it that much, yeah. um, I still have to do it. I still do it. Like, I do not miss a pap smear appointment. I, I do not. I do it. No. And now it's not yearly anymore. It's every three years. Tertiary prevention. The diagnosis and treatment of invasive cervical cancer are vital in halting its progression. So ensuring that women identified with cervical disease receive timely and appropriate treatment is a significant component in preventing cervical cancer. There are ongoing developments in the field, such as therapeutic HPV vaccinations, like mm -hmm. we've talked about, which hold great promise for further preventing, actually further prevention of cervical cancer. Additionally, the option of self-collection of vaginal, vaginal <laughs> samples for primary um, HPV screening is being considered as a strategy to reach populations that are not adequately screened. Because that's another thing, like people that live far away from a doctor, and also, like, when I say get your HPV shot, mm -hmm. time is going to go by, right? Yeah. And then if you don't get it, then your kid is going to go to the doctor by themselves mm -hmm. and they're probably going to forget. And truly, like, 
it does i i get a lot of parents that look at me with like three heads every time i tell them that it doesn't matter if your kid is sexually active yeah it's not recommended to get a pap test and they're like well we want a referral to the gynecologist and i'm like for what mm-hmm. and they're like oh because they're sexually active and i'm like everything still is the same down there mm-hmm. nothing changes <laughs> and then they're like oh to check and then i was like do you want me to check yeah and then they're like mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So know. yeah, basically screening is recommended at the age of 21, regardless if you're sexually active or not. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. yeah. Like you said, it's, it's not going to change. Like, I mean, yeah. Anyway. Exactly. So yeah. So get your shot. Get your shot. <laughs> and the consensus is important to get that HPV yeah. vaccination, both for men and women. This okay. is not only a woman problem. HPV causes many more things other than mm-hmm. just cervical cancer, mm-hmm. and that can affect men. Men, you don't have cervixes, but you do have throats, yes. and you do have mouths, <laughs> which HPV can mess things up significantly for your throat or your mouth. Yep. So thank you for tuning in. And that was <laughs> cervical cancer. I don't know what. I don't know. <laughs> I had a huge brain fart right now. What is wrong with me today? I don't know. Wander. Wander. <laughs> Hashtag Wanderlust 2024. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for tuning in. Bye. Bye. Like, comment, review us on all streaming platforms Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, etc. Check us out on Instagram and TikTok at Funny Medicine Podcast. Our Gmail is funnymedicine305 at gmail.com. And remember, we are not diagnosing you. Definitely not. Just funny stuff. See you later, guys. <laughs>